take that out and I promise you, you're gonna feel so much better about yourself. Hi everyone, let's talk about six ways you can become more confident in your body the way it is right now. Hang on, let me grab my co-host. Come here buddy, much better. Something I get asked all the time is, how am I so confident with my body? And it's really these six steps that are marked by the Hayes community, which is health at every size community. And I wanna bring you through them and share my take and my perspective on what each of these steps mean for me. And then we're also going to do a little exercise at the end, which changed my life on becoming more confident. First of all, let's take a moment for the outfit. I am wearing this, okay, my head is just gonna be chopped off. This skirt from Nike. This is a tank top from Amazon, and then I was on meetings all day, and so I just paired it with this Shein sweater. But I'm so obsessed with this combo. Like, I love a good tight, high-waisted situation with a cropped moment and then a long sweater moment as well. Like, look at how freaking cute I am. Enough about me. First step, sounds a lot easier than it is, but I want you to reject societal norms when it comes to beauty and health, okay? Every single body is unique, right? And we need to accept that and acknowledge it. And even if we don't think about it about ourselves, we have to be able to change our framework and look at other people and think that. Because the second we start thinking about that about other people is the second we start thinking about it about ourselves. So I want you to do that, to challenge you to reject that. I'm talking for the last 10 years, it's been small waist, big booty, big boobs. Now it's going more toward, you know, thin all the way around and it's constantly changing and it's just not sustainable for any of us to continue to subscribe to that. This is going to be really difficult because it's so ingrained in us and it's so ingrained in every media that we consume, conversations you're having with other people. It's crazy when you are removed from it, like myself, for the last five years I've not subscribed to any of this. I notice how often conversations are around what people look like and what they want to change and what they don't like about their bodies and when you compliment someone, they immediately are like, oh, you know, it's Botox or, oh no, this old thing, it's so annoying. It doesn't have to be that way and you also don't have to subscribe to that. So number two is gonna be like focusing on your well-being. Shift your focus away from weight loss, right? So take weight loss out of the equation and focus on this body that you're in right now and not changing it. Like what can you do for your body in this moment that's gonna make you feel good? There are so many things that make me feel good that have nothing to do with weight loss. There are so many aspects to your well-being that have nothing to do with losing weight. So for me, there are a few things that I make sure to incorporate, if not every day, every week. It's physical movement. I'm not saying exercise is bad. Exercise is so good, but it's the way that you use it as a tool rather than a punishment is what matters. So for me, I found after years of trying, I found my like holy grail and that's hot yoga. I feel like a new person afterward. I feel so in tune with my body. It's super emotional and it's super meditative. And I leave every single class feeling like, oh, I hope I continue to do this for the rest of my life. And that is what movement and exercise should be about. It shouldn't be some sort of punishment. It shouldn't be something you feel like you have to do. You should feel like a brand new person afterward and like you wanna continue to do it, not the opposite. If you feel bad about it, if it hurts your body, if it's feeling really yucky emotionally, don't do it. And it took me a long time to get to that place. I went about a year without exercise because I couldn't move my body without bringing it to a place of, I need to lose weight. This is how many calories I need to burn. In order to eat this later, I need to exercise. Take that out, take it out. And I promise you, you're gonna feel so much better about yourself. Other things that I like to do is going for walks with my beautiful dog. It's so fun. I love to go walks with him and even my partner, family members. It's a nice time to chat. It's just a nice time to really enjoy nature. And and there's nothing more meditative and calming than being out in nature. So I definitely recommend that. Some people find happiness in rollerblading. Okay, so then maybe that's your only form of exercise. Keep doing it. Keep doing what makes you feel good. In the summer, maybe someone likes paddle boarding. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's not me. It's not me. I can't paddleboard. <laughs> paddleboard. Here's a clip.
Along with moving your body and engaging in activity that's fun, you need to be eating things that are not only nutritious and nutrient dense, but also those play foods, the cookies, the cakes, the things that you have deemed so far as unhealthy. Those really fuel happiness and in America and all over the world, food is social, food is happy, and there's no need to take that away. It's a matter of balancing and incorporating those foods into your life without feeling guilt about them. And I plan on doing a whole other video on how to not feel guilty around food and to stop putting moral on good and bad food and how you eventually create a really balanced diet through intuitive eating, which you might have heard a lot. It's definitely a buzzword right now. And unfortunately, some people in the wellness trap, which is also diet culture, are taking that word intuitive eating and making it seem like it's not a diet, but it is. And I don't subscribe to diets and and I will help work through that with you if you wanna go there. Also, getting enough sleep. Like, make sure you're resting. Set aside time to really rest, read, do your skincare, brush your teeth for a full two minutes. That seems so crazy, but really incorporating self care in a way in your life that makes it so habitual that you're going to feel better about yourself, right? And it's not gonna have anything to do with weight loss. So, for me, something that I've always wanted to do was get better at my skincare. I spend money on Botox and I want to just kind of maintain that self-care with my skin throughout. And so what I found is that at night I find myself like really unmotivated to do skincare. And so what I've done is now I keep my skincare on my coffee table in a bag at night so that when things are wrapping up, like eight o'clock, you know, we have like one more episode of Vanderpump Rules to watch. Rewatches, obviously, because my girlfriend has never seen it. I'll start doing my skincare right on the couch. I don't need to leave the couch. I can just do it right there. Um, so making things easier for yourself to be successful is so important, I think. I could go on for days about self-care, and I will at some point in another video. The third step is to really appreciate what your body is doing for you. So instead of hating your legs, change that mindset and say, I'm so thankful that my legs help me walk. See that flip? My arms are so amazing because they help me pick up my dog and hug my partner. They help me do simple tasks every single day so that I can live my life. Empower yourself. I hate my legs maybe your thought, but my legs are so strong and they're able to help me move my body in a way that feels so good. I'm so thankful that I have these legs that can hold me during my downward facing dog in yoga class that brings me so much joy. Start changing the narrative and it sounds so corny, but once you start doing that, it's really gonna help you internally accept these things that you maybe have once hated. I'm not saying you're gonna love them, but you're gonna feel neutral about them. And that is way better than feeling negative about them. Something that makes people feel good for the most part is sex. I mean, taboo, I know, but like, let's talk about it. That's something that feels good and your body feels good in the moment. And even if that just means sex with yourself, right? Like, it doesn't have to be this whole thing where you have to like sleep with somebody and maybe you feel self-conscious about your body, been there, right? Like make it an experience for yourself, make it enjoyable, make it feel good, really appreciate your body and what it's able to do, it's so beautiful. Number four is going to be surround yourself with positive influence. Open up your social media right now, actually wait, no, finish the video and then do that. And hide or unfollow people that make you feel bad about yourself. Once upon a time, you followed this fitness influencer because you wanted to try those workouts Let's be honest, babe, you never tried the workouts. And it's okay. I have been there. I don't think I'm better than you because I have been there and I'm not there anymore, but it doesn't help. It makes you feel worse. So if you're feeling weird, maybe you even have friends that trigger you. I definitely have in the past and I've just hidden them. You don't have to unfollow them. It doesn't have to be this big thing. No one has to know. I've just hidden them because I realized that their posts and their philosophy on things don't make me feel empowered. They make me feel worse about myself. You have every right to do that. Surround yourself with these people. I'm not talking about only in person, obviously, but on social media. I have so many different people that I follow that don't look like me, or maybe they look like me, but they have the same viewpoint on you know, health at every size, intuitive eating, anti-diet, rejecting all of that. And 
I follow them so that I have a constant reminder of the beliefs that I have right in front of me. And I'm happy to share a list of all of the people that I follow at all different shapes, sizes, and points in their journeys right here. These people have changed my life. There are so many other people that I follow that I didn't put on the list, but they are there. All of these people don't subscribe to this weight loss being small is important. They just live their lives happily in the body that they're in and that's what I want to encourage you to do and that's what they all encourage me to do as well. So screenshot. Also along with social media, listen to podcasts that are also going to help you with the mindset. One of my favorite podcasts that I listen to whenever Whenever I'm feeling really weird around food and body is um, Christy Harrison's anti-diet podcast. Um, I also love her book. Uh, that's the first anti-diet book that I read. Um, I'm obsessed with the fuck it diet book. I'm currently reading that right now, but it's everything I ever expected it to be. And it's just like a hotter take. It's like a, a sexier way to put all the information from the anti-diet book into this other book. Other podcasts that I am blanking on right now, I'll also put them here. Really amazing, amazing resources to help surround you and help you stay in this mindset as it's so easy to go back to these old ways of hating yourself because that's what everyone else does. Number five is like practice self-compassion. Be so nice to yourself. Allow yourself to mess up, to identify moments where you're slipping back into maybe the old mindset of hating your body and wanting to be smaller. Just give yourself grace through this process. It took me maybe two full years to be able to get to the point that I'm in now and now it's been five years total and I really Really am completely healed from this self-hatred and uh, need to be smaller and all of that. Practicing self-care and, and, and going back to that number two of focusing on your well-being ties into this. If you're making sure you're doing all of these things that feel really good for you, you're talking positively to yourself, you're um, talking positively about others, it's going to totally help you with your process. It's totally just gonna help you. Really go hard on self-care here. Like, like really put yourself first. And I don't just mean in, you know, brushing your teeth for two minutes, doing your skincare, going for walks. I mean, if you need to cut relationships, if you need to have some boundaries and set some boundaries with people, you need to do that because it's gonna help you. And if you put the work in in the front end, it'll help you when you're in the back end. I set boundaries with my family when I began to adopt the philosophies of anti-diet and self-acceptance and knowing that health is at every size, no matter your size. I mentioned that I didn't wanna talk about my weight. I don't wanna talk about weight in general. It's something that is irrelevant to me. I don't wanna talk about foods that are healthy or unhealthy, what I should and shouldn't be. I don't wanna practice a negative self-talk. I really want things to be really clear and my family agreed to it. It's crazy. Through that, my sister was able to kind of change her relationship with food and exercise and body just from listening to me and hearing my conversations. And, and that, that was huge, I think, because growing up for us, it was a lot of lose weight. You know, my parents wanted to lose weight. And so we thought we had to lose weight. And you know, there are some instances where I was told I should be losing weight because that's what we all thought was helpful and healthy. And now that there's more research, we know that that's just not true. Number six, challenge beauty standards. Similar to number one of rejecting social ideals. If you're used to only wearing black or maybe you were told that you look bad in shorts, challenge it wear the damn shorts, put on some freaking color, do things and really find out who you are and what your style is. Celebrate your uniqueness and run with it. That is going to make you feel so much more confident because you're not trying to be anybody else. You're just being you. There's nothing that makes me more confident than being me. So those were the six steps from a health at every size perspective that you can take to become more confident in your body. I wanted to do a quick little exercise with you that completely changed my life and I'll explain how I did that now. So I first started working with a coach. She doesn't do this type of coaching anymore. I'm not gonna recommend her or anything, but she completely changed my life. You know, I had called her and said that I wanted to lose X amount of pounds and she was like, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to do that, um, but what I can do is help you feel the way you would feel if you had lost that weight. Do you wanna do this? And I said, yes, I'm desperate at this point. So what I wanna challenge 
you to do is come up with three words, three feelings that you believe you would feel if you were to lose the weight or look this ideal person, right? Like you have this ideal body of what you wish you could be. If you're watching this video up to this point, I'm assuming that that's you. I want you to come up with three feelings that you would feel if you got to this point that you thought you wanted to get to. So I'll give you a second to think about it. Pause if you need more time. For me, when I did this exercise, you know, five years ago, it's so crazy to think it was five years ago. These are the things I came up with. I wanted to feel sexy, confident, and healthy. Those were the three things that I thought if I got to this ideal way, and I lost X amount of weight, I would feel those three things. So then what I was challenged to do from then is to come up with another three ways for each of those three ways that I can get to that feeling that has nothing to do with weight loss. So right, mine's sexy, confident, and healthy. An example for me. Sexy. I feel sexy when I I feel sexy when I'm dancing to a song that's like booty popping and really just like gets you confident and feeling good and the juice is flowing. So dancing would be one of them. Another time I feel sexy is when my hair is blown out straight. I have pretty wavy curly hair, but without fail, every time if I straighten my hair or like blow it out. I am like whipping it, I'm like feeling myself. So let's just come up for this, we'll just do two, but the list can go on. So that's sexy. For confidence, I feel confident after I finish a workout. I mean, there's nothing like that high that I get. I feel super confident when I have on a specific outfit. So for me, my go-to is a tight bottom that's high-waisted with a crop and a long sweater. Why would I steer away from that if I know that that's what makes me feel confident? I do some sort of variation of that for every single season. So for winter, it's like leggings and a flannel and a crop top, or it's gonna be like jeans and a sweater and a cute tank. So summer, I'm wearing, you know, my skirt. This, I just take that same formula and repurpose it. That's a good one. And then for healthy, when do I feel healthy? I feel healthy when I'm eating salad. I think that that's a diet culture thing probably, but it is refreshing. Like when I have salad or fruit on like a hot summer day, there's nothing that hits better. And the salad is nutrient dense. It's gonna have protein, it's gonna have carbs, it's gonna have fats, it's gonna be tasty. It's not gonna be something that I dread eating. It's gonna be amazing. So that makes me feel healthy. Obviously exercising makes me feel super healthy. So that kind of goes with the, the confidence and the sexy thing. Oh, drinking a lot of water. I feel hydrated. My skin is glowing. Like when I have a good amount of water, it, I, I feel really good and healthy. So that just gives you an idea of how I like to do this. And the list could go on. I could list a whole bunch of things that make me feel these things. But the idea is that you can do all of these things and not have it relate to losing weight. I can feel sexy. I can feel confident. I can feel healthy and I can do these things to make me get there. And that is like the best feeling ever. It goes back to that list, right? Of rejecting the societal body ideals. Reject that and do it based off of feeling. What would a world be like if we just felt instead of saw? Pretty cool, pretty good. I hope that that little exercise helps you in the future. I think that if you continue to do that, you'll come up with a list of things that make you feel good and you'll continue to do those. And then once you do those things that make you feel amazing, sexy, healthy, whatever your goal is, you're going to feel so much better in your body and you're gonna feel confident. And that's how I got there. I want you to get there too. Listen, I have so many tricks up my sleeve to help you with all of this. I'm gonna do some more videos on how I got to reject the diet culture mentality. Orny is getting so antsy right now. Are you antsy? You're hot and you're antsy. I know. It's hot out today. Yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you liked this. If you did, like, subscribe, comment, turn on your alerts for when I post videos. I post a video every single week and as long as people are viewing them, I'm going to keep posting them and if you want more, I will post more. Follow me on all social media. It's the same handle for everything, Marissa underscore Lynn underscore. And that's it. I hope you have a great day from your favorite fat gay.